Hi there. I'm Jennifer Elizabeth Masters. I am the founder of Love Yourself Fearlessly, the author of Orgasm for Life. And uh, hi, Lynn. How are you? And let's see, I overcame depression and anxiety on my own. And I did take Prozac for six months and it nearly killed me. So I healed my depression and anxiety without drugs, without medication. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about why so many people are depressed today and why do so many people have anxiety. Would you like to have some of that information today? <clears throat> so if you could share this video, that would be awesome. Excuse me, let me just take a sip here. It's my, <clears throat> my afternoon tea. That is one habit, you know, that I have... <laughs> I have continued for years and years. I grew up in Canada drinking tea with my mother. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's see if I can share this page. It's not where I want it. We're going to be talking about um, how you can overcome these things as well. I'm going to give you some information, let you know what I did. Okay. One more share. Hang on one second. So um, depression is a, it's a multi-billion dollar industry in the United States. One in six Americans is on some form of antidepressant. And of the people that I have worked with, and I've worked with thousands, when people are diagnosed and then are on medication, they may take uh, medication for anxiety and and this is typically what happens they come to the psychiatrist for the anxiety they give them medication for the anxiety and then they need two or three other pills to counteract the first medication that they were given and and i can go into greater details with this in another video about medication and trying to get medication straightened but let me just share with you my experience with prozac uh, Prozac was something that I was given. I had been depressed for, oh, probably over 20 years, maybe even my entire life. And I'll talk to you about what causes depression and where, where does it come from. And I'll also talk about where does anxiety come from because they're, they're two different things, but they are often married together. <laughs> they often come together. If you have Depression, you often have anxiety, but you can have anxiety uh, without, it's a rare thing, but to have anxiety without depression because usually the two come together. And, <laughs> and there's a reason why that's true because people that have anxiety and depression do not have their mind in control. Their mind is running the show. And they're unaware that there's something they could do differently so that they felt different. So um, I'm going to just talk about anxiety first because it starts with A. So where does anxiety come from? Anxiety comes from I have I've got to get I've got to get this report done. I've I've got to get um, I've got to get my kids to school. I've got to make lunches. I have, I have to, um, I've got to do the laundry and iron the clothes. And, and then, oh, my husband's going to be home by uh, five o'clock and, and I've got to have dinner ready. And, and so you hear in my voice as we are focusing on all the things we have to do 
where is the attention and focus? It's not right now. It's not right here. It's not, okay, let's just do one thing at a time. It is, it's focusing on all those list of things, a litany of things. Maybe not all those things need to get done in one day. Maybe there's a week worth of tasks and chores, but we're lotting them all together and focusing on all eventually. And what I will tell you is the focus on tomorrow. When am I going to meet my guy? When am I going to make my million dollars? When will I win the lottery? When will I feel better? When will I have a successful business? When, when, when? <laughs> We're focusing on another point in time. Not today. Not right now. So take a breath. Right now, I have a cup of tea. And right now, my cup of tea is still pretty warm. So I'm going to drink some of my tea because it's right in front of me. And I'm going to breathe. I'm going to take a breath. Just notice, are you breathing? And how do you feel right now? Where is your focus? Are you listening to my voice? Are you watching this video? Or are you texting friends? Are you doing multiple things at one time? I am here to tell you, my friends, because I've done it myself. You know, I'm an author of multiple books. I've got three books, actually eight books, sort of on the go, <laughs> children's books, and three new uh, books about depression. One thing at a time. We have to focus on this one thing right now. What are we doing right now? Multitasking doesn't work. It doesn't work. Oh, I, he I hear you. I hear people out there arguing. Oh, yes, it does. I can, I can uh, do a blog post and text my friends and I can, well, you know, scientifically, You've been disproven. I apologize, but no, I will just take that apology back because I'm not going to apologize. <laughs> the truth is, every time this thing dings, every time it pings, every time it beeps, and mine, I'll show you. Do you see this? I don't know if you can see it. Mine is off. I keep my phone off because I can't be distracted constantly. I will never get anything done if my phone... There are some days that I've got seven or eight people texting me all at one time. And if my phone is binging, ping, 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 and I'm on, the, on Zoom with a client, I can't be focused. I won't give my undivided attention to that one person. So take a breath. Let's just clear this plate, clear the table, clear everything. Do one thing at a time. And just a little side note about anxiety. If you're worried about money, focus on one thing at a time. It, the way to manifest is to be absolutely crystal clear and focused on one thing at a time. So us working through this anxiety issue is going to help you in all areas of your life. So stop multitasking and start focusing on one thing at a time. Have a to-do list. Write your, write your to-do list out all the things you want to accomplish today. Set an intention for your day. When we set an intention, you can even do it the night before. You've got your to-do list, all the things you didn't accomplish today that you want now to get done tomorrow. So what you need to do, <laughs> can you hear this meowing? <laughs> what, what you need to do is write your the list of the things that you didn't get accomplished today at the end of the day and and get them off your mind they're on the list on a piece of paper off your mind and then set an intention for what you want to accomplish tomorrow you already are thinking tomorrow is going to be a great day I am going to be focused I'll have mental clarity I will be calm I will breathe deeply I will feel loved I will feel good enough and I will share joy and love with everyone I meet. Just, you know, set your intention the night before and then read it again 
the next day, when we set an intention for our day, our day goes better. So that's number one, setting an intention for your day. Number two, meditation will help you tremendously. And I have all kinds of videos on YouTube about meditation. I've got tricks and tips because I cannot tell you the number of people, hundreds of them have come to me and said, oh, I can't meditate. I teach them how to quiet their mind. And I had one woman who worked with me from Chicago. Uh, and my phone is ringing. A woman who worked with me from Chicago. She was um, a director in a tech company from India. And she said to me, oh, I can't meditate. I pray every day, but I can't meditate. And I gave her uh, some tips and tricks. And she started to meditate on a regular basis. But... Other than that, she was able to uh, quiet her mind completely in three months. She called me up and said, Jennifer, um, my mind is quiet. What's wrong? She was worried something was wrong with her because she had quieted her mind. And, and you can do it too. It's, it's part of the work I do. Okay, so breathing deeply into the moment. Meditation will help you. Um, would you like me to go through a few things that would help? Okay, natural cures. Where does anxiety come from? It comes from focusing on tomorrow or the next day or the next year and not being in the moment. Where does depression come from? Uh, depression comes from a feeling of helplessness or hopelessness. Um, it comes from uh, feeling um, anger that you feel you don't have a right to have. It comes from sexual molestation or sexual assault and uh, abuse from childhood that's not processed. So we've, we can't ignore s these issues that we've had in childhood. We can't shove them under the rug and expect them to go away. That's not the way it works. We have to process our emotions. All right, so I'll just give you a few signs of depression. I need my glasses. Signs of depression, signs that you may be depressed. You have, um, you have clutter in your home or car. You get up and you don't want to shower, shave, or put makeup on or do your hair. You don't care how you look. You're emotionally reactive. You leave things on the floor. You leave bills unpaid. You're not returning phone calls, maybe not reading your emails. You're in a place of overwhelm. Um, you have no interest in doing the things that usually give you pleasure, uh, maybe no libido, no interest in sex, maybe food isn't interesting to you anymore, or you are overeating and overindulging trying to stuff those feelings. Uh, you feel unloved. You may feel unwanted. You may feel... Um, you know, your short your attention span has gotten really reduced. Your memory may not be good. You may have difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep. You could be incredibly irritable. Um, you may be eating low vibrational comfort foods like macaroni and cheese, lots of noodles, spaghetti, breads, things like that. Um, you have negative thoughts that you can't stop. You have a general malaise in the body and mind or body pains that are unexplained. And I had a lot of these when I was depressed. I had fibromyalgia, Epstein-Barr, and autoimmune disease. So these are things that I help people overcome. And, you know, you can take an antidepressant, but what I'll tell you about an antidepressant is it is not a cure. It is a Band-Aid for the symptoms. It doesn't cure depression. It doesn't fix the problem. It is a Band-Aid for the symptoms. And from the work that I've done with clients, what they've told me is that uh, the antidepressants don't allow them to emote or, or cry. One woman lost her dog and couldn't even cry. She knew she needed to cry, but she was unable to do so. So you may feel totally flat and completely numb on antidepressants. 
and um, so I have a system that I use that is completely natural it involves energy clearings and I give you the tools to overcome a lot of the negative behaviors as well and I also work with people alleviating suicidal ideation and how do I do that well you have to work with me to find out but I've I've had many people come to me with suicidal ideation and I've cleared it in a session or two three at the most so um, yes so we don't have to be committing suicide and let's see so how do you relieve these uh, symptoms naturally well, you could get an energy clearing. You could do hypnotherapy. I do all of those things. You could do cognitive therapy. Um, you could do Bach flower remedies. You could use essential oils. Um, you could take uh, Sam E, S A M hyphen E. You could take supplements like serotonin, 5 HTP. Those help you to increase the amount of serotonin in your body. So for some people, it is. It is a combination of chemical issues and anger that is not processed. It, feelings of sadness and sorrow, grief that haven't been processed but have been stuffed. So uh, yes, those, those things can all be relieved through an energy clearing. Drink more water. Water is really important. Take vitamin um, D3. Uh, get out in the sunlight, eat more fish, get more omega-3s, walk outside at sunrise, exercise. All of these things could help you to feel better. So uh, let's see. So I just want to see if anybody has a question. Anybody? No. Okay. So hopefully I've covered this subject fairly well. Um, yes, I did have anxiety. Yes, I did have depression. And I, I healed it all, as well as codependency, fibromyalgia, all the body pains. I, um, you know, I'm a, an, older, uh, an older woman, and I do not have any kind of body pains whatsoever. I have original, original hips. <laughs> I have not replaced my joints. <laughs> And I have no body pains. So if you have a lot of body pain, it is likely, you know, that it is caused by depression. And, you know, why does that happen? Your body is trying to get a message to you. It's like ding, 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 pay attention. Your body is trying to get a message to you. Pay attention. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you for watching. I hope this helped. And um, I have other videos, and I have a, a new book coming out very soon that will help you tremendously with depression. I also have a depression quiz. I will post it under the video. Please do subscribe to my videos on, um, on YouTube. I sure would appreciate it. Sending you lots of love. Mwah. Remember, breathe deeply and stay in the present. Tomorrow will come whether you worry about it or not. I love you.